Hi everybody, I'm Sonia Choquette. Welcome to my channel if you're coming for the first time and welcome back if you've been with me for a while. I'm so grateful that you're here. We are talking today, we're gonna to continue the conversation about entering the fifth dimension, how to know you are in fact succeeding. And one of the signatures of that is your ability to start experiencing your spirit big, big signature of the fifth dimension is you see yourself, you experience yourself from the, the understanding that you are an infinite divine spirit and not a, a temporary suffering, limited victim, victimy ego. That's one of the biggest signatures. You, you, you just move into a different universe with that. Secondly, another big signature that you are entering the fifth dimension is that you do have a direct experience of support from the spirit realm, from your support system in the spirit realm. Your guides, your angels, light beings, healers, teachers, joy guides, animal spirits, nature spirits, it, it, it's such a populated realm of support once you enter the fifth dimension that you begin to feel more confident and reassured and secure and creative, less frightened, less isolated, less reactive, less pained, less stuck. So I want to first give you some some anecdotes. I want to share some stories with how you experience guidance because I think that this is a big part of our confusion. And the, the answer is that there is no one answer fits all. There is no one way to get guidance. We get it in so many ways. In fact, I've written an entire book called Ask Your Guides that gives you all the ways in which your spirit guides and your helpers and your higher self and your creator are working to support and and give you give you some direction in life so you you don't suffer unnecessarily. Now one of the ways in which guidance comes is this way through some 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 connection in your life that seems a bit spontaneous or random where you end up at a channel like this or in a conversation about spirit guides or or you end up overhearing a radio or a podcast show or or you just you might be standing in line at the grocery store and you hear something in front of you and that's not even directly to you but speaks exactly to where you might be suffering or where you're looking for guidance so that's the first way in which your your divine support system connects with you and your logic brain can think oh they'll say things like well that's a weird or what a coincidence or that's so strange because the logic brain is is your ego self is conditioned to believe there is no support out there that you're on your own so when you do get this support it creates confusion and often rejection and this is especially something i want to talk about today I've been teaching people to work with their spirit guides and live in their spirit and trust their vibes for over 45, almost 50 years. Seriously, I'm not kidding. I have books, 30 books. I have traveled the world. I have talked to everyone. And the thing I see most often, and it just blows my mind, is so many people are getting such tremendous guidance all the time fabulous guidance all the time and then they throw it away because they don't have the context for it their 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 conditioning is this isn't normal i can't listen to this this doesn't make any logical sense so some of the responses to beautiful insight and guidance are all oh, that so weird or i don't know where that came from so i'm going to just ignore it or i can't be sure because your logic is looking for certainty or that's so weird, or I don't know, that scares me. And that is just your logic brain saying, I can't make sense of this, so let's ignore it. Let's just push it away and make it uncomfortable. So then ask yourself, in fact, has it ever happened to you? Put it in my comments. Have you ever received some kind of inner understanding? And there's 
four ways in which you can receive guidance. So I want to talk about those four ways. One is called clairvoyance. It means a clear view. You get an image, something pops in your mind, some, some image, or you imagine something, or some, some, something that you can almost visualize is coming, flashes across you. It's so fast. That's clairvoyance. Have you ever had a clairvoyant experience? Not everybody does. So if it's not your thing, okay. But what about clairaudience? Now, this is where a lot of people get confused because clairaudience is an is a, is a experience of hearing, but it's not hearing with your ears and it's not hearing external sound. It's hearing vibration. And hearing isn't even really an accurate word. We're just a li bit limited because we define our experiences to our outer senses. But we're receiving an energy. And, and it's an energy that we then give meaning to. So you think, well, that's weird. Think about music. Maybe you're going to hear a beautiful piece of classical music and it means something joyful or it means something sorrowful. But there are no words. It's the music is the vibration and it's communicating. So energy communicates. That is called clear audience. And the way we receive it is, you know, I just, you know, I, I sometimes we say I, I, I think or, you know, my inner voice says or my heart says because we're trying to find what, what part of us is communicating. For clear audience is when we're receiving a communication that is not from a person or the physical sense. Then there's another one, and this is very common. It's called clairsentience, where you feel, I have a feeling. And it's not a physical feeling, like a sensation. And it's not an emotion. It is a receiving of energy. So if you just do this on your, on your cheek for a moment, you're not touching your cheek, but you can feel the energy. Have you ever been in a, in a room by yourself, for example, and, and someone walks into the space you don't see, but you can feel their presence? Or how about if you walk into a room where an argument just took place, but it's empty, you can feel the agitation. Or maybe people are there with a smile on their face and acting like everything's fine, but you can feel that that energy is not reflecting what's just been happening. So these are called our inner senses. And one of the signatures of, of becoming a, a, a fifth dimension person is that these inner senses begin to awaken that, that, that high heart that, that gets direction from the best part of you, your higher self, that kind of gives you a sense of what's right and wrong for you. Not universally, not what you learned in religious training, if that was the case, but what feels vibrationally right and good and supportive or not to you. Then there's the heart itself, which just reflects if, if this is also a good connection that opens my heart, brings me peace, brings me joy, reassures me, or is, this a, is, a, is it a connection that's familiar but is agitating and causes me to doubt myself and causes me to feel afraid and defensive and insecure and angry and all the other lovely fifth dimension disturbing emotions. And then we have the, the gut, which is our, our, our red light that says, wait a minute, no good, don't go. That's guidance. And you have spirit guides assisting in that process saying, don't go there, stop. Angels, for example, your guardian angels and more nature spirits helper guides just saying that's not good for you don't go there and i like to be, as a teacher make this as simple as possible your your red light guides stop your your green light guides go for it your yellow light guides saying just pump the brakes wait a minute don't decide yet let's get some more 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 is to come that will help inform your decisions every bit of guidance is about decisions. What are you going to do with that? So earth angel guidance comes first. You might have a book fall on your, on your head. You might have a, over here a conversation. These are all your entering into the fifth dimension, your own receptivity and availability for growth, 
attracts those experiences. There is a connection. It's not random. That's the that's a very important piece of information to have. It all connects. Secondly, another way that we get guidance and through our senses and through our inner senses and the way our body is designed, our our guides talk to us through through podcasts and through through um, conversations and through books. A guide took you to this book or that book or 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 this conversation or that lecture or or this channel. That's another way your guides maneuver you to receive in a way that you don't miss. Eventually, you start to experience what guidance feels like internally. That's because you're waking up your inner senses. You're starting to recognize if you get an inner feeling of, of caution, the red light guidance, or you get an inner feeling of of push forward in spite of your logic to say, give this a go or to pause. That internal guidance, those inner senses opening up is your fifth dimension self coming online. So you don't levitate, you don't leave the planet, you don't black out, you don't have an apparition standing in front of you. You become more aware and you start to see life in a different way. You start to to experience life as as a as an energy that you have an influence on. Not that it's just happening to you, but that you can actually put your own energy into your life, make your own choices, have your own responses. And that will determine your experience. Now, the inner knowing, I've had that, that example of guidance my whole life. And I want to share some stories with you about that. One of the most dramatic stories that I want to share with you is when I was about 14, my brother, who was 17 at the time, just turned, got permission, and we lived in Colorado, got permission from my parents to be able to go up to the mountains at night and see the Rolling Stones concert, which was such a big deal back in the day. And he was not only allowed to go, but he had his own car and he was allowed to drive. So it was, I was so jealous. I remember that so well at 14, I wasn't even allowed to consider such a thing. But off he went. He left about three in the afternoon, maybe even earlier, to get a good seat. It's this big outdoor experience in Steamboat Springs. Well, one in the morning, you know, I was waiting up for him because I wanted to ask all about it. The phone rang. And my father answered because my mother was deaf. And she, she lost her hearing during the war when she was 15 years old, younger, 12. So she was attuned to guidance instead of the outer world. But she couldn't talk on the phone. My dad answered the phone. And it was the police, the state police, called him and said that my brother had just been in a car accident. And sadly, he didn't make it. And they needed to let him know to get dressed and get ready to go. And they would call him as soon as they had more information. And I remember my father just being stunned, just stunned. And my mom looking at him like, what, what, what? And he said, sit down. And she was like, I don't want to sit down. What? But he said, sit down. I think he needed to sit down. This was such a shock. And I was beyond stunned. And my dad said to my mom, Neil's been in an accident, and I don't think he made it. And my mom was like, what? I mean, she could lip read, and she had a hearing aid, so there was communication. And my dad said, Neil's been in an accident. That was the police. They said that they didn't think he made it and that they were going to call us to get dressed. We got to go. And she sat quietly and didn't move, and she just went inward, and she said, it's not him. And my dad said, what are you talking about? Of course it's him. They just called. And she said, I don't care. It's not him. She would just check out. And he was, didn't know what to do. I mean, he had to process that information himself. But I remember hearing that I believed her. I remember that I believed her. And he said, please get dressed. And she said, she shrugged. And she said, it's not him. And she didn't move. Well, about 10 minutes later, the phone rang again. And guess what? It was my brother. 
He said, Dad, there's been an accident. My dad said, I, the police just called. They said, you were in the accident. You were killed. And he said, it wasn't me. It was a car in front of me. That car got in an accident, and I got out and put my coat over the driver when, I, when we got him out of the car, and they took him away. And the police came, and the ambulance came. I was, wait, my coat went with it, and my license was in the pocket. So there, that's why they thought it was me. It's not me. And of course, you can imagine the, the, the wild circus of experience and emotion we went through in that 35, 40 minutes of time. But that's how guidance works. Sometimes you can't, you can't rely on the logic brain. Now, of course, there are times when you're going to, maybe that is the experience of that there was a loss, there was a crisis, there was a death. That does happen because we all eventually will have that experience, that fate because we're temporarily in our human bodies. That's, that's just a fact of reality of life. So if that does happen, I want to share another story with you about guidance that is equally moving. I just went to a conference in uh, Phoenix called I Can Do It and spoke there with my publisher, Hay House. It was an incredibly gorgeous experience. And I was talking about guides and guidance and moving to the fifth dimension and how it's our choice, but we are we are really being encouraged, intensely encouraged to move into this higher frequency because the planet needs us to move into our spirit, which is what moving into the fifth dimension is. Well, quite spontaneously, my guides picked a woman out of the audience and I, I said, what is your guidance telling you? And at first she said a whole bunch of, I got to tell everybody off and I need my boundaries. And I said, well, and I heard her because she was close enough. And I said, well, I hear that you're saying you got to tell everyone off and you've got to let them know they're crossing your boundaries. And I said, while that's probably a good idea for your overall mental health, that's not spirit guidance. And I said, would you like to experience spirit guidance? And she had this beautiful yellow sweater on and she was just, she said, okay. And I said, well, would you like to come up here? And she was mixed. I said, you have a choice, but you, I'm, I'm guided to ask you up here. So she came up and I said, you know, what do you love? What, is, what is your love? Let's open that heart because that's where the guidance comes from. And she said, singing. And I said, would you like to sing? Of course, there's, you know, hundreds of people sitting in front of her. And she just, her ego, of course, it got caught by surprise and freaked out. And I said, you have a choice. And she stayed and said, okay, I'm going to sing. And I said, she said, what will I sing? And I suggested Mary had a little lamb just to make it easy. And she said, no, no. She was thoughtful. And she, you could tell she was checking in with her guidance. And she said, I'm going to sing, you are my sunshine because that's what I like to sing to my grandkids. So at first she sang, You Are My Sunshine, and it was really, you could tell, it was really coming from the third dimension, her ego. It was shy, it was withholding, it was hesitant. But then she flipped into the fifth dimension, and all of a sudden her heart blew open, and she sang so full on and so gorgeously that it, it stirred the whole audience to their feet to applause. It was that powerful. And that joyful, and that's the joy I'm talking about when you move to the fifth dimension. It's contagious. So it was such an exciting moment. She was just radiating. And I said, what does your ego self have to say now? And she said, it's quiet. I, I'm not even mad or anything. I'm over it. So that's the other phenomenal healing of moving into the fifth dimension. So my guides picked her. She came up. Her guy told her what to sing. That moved the audience. But guess what happened after that? So I'm leaving. And this beautiful woman pulled, pulled me to the side and said, before you go, can I share an important story with you? And of course, I was very interested. And she said, I didn't know where I was going to go. There were six speakers simultaneously speaking. And she said, I didn't know which one to go to. I could go wherever I want, but I was guided to come to you. It just felt like. I should go. And of course, this is a big signature of fifth dimension. Your hand goes here and you're moved. That's another clue. You're moved. She said, so I was moved into your audience. She said, I came here because I just lost my daughter. 
and I have been in such an in, in, inconsolable grief that I came with it with the hope and the and the the wish that perhaps I would have some kind of contact, some kind of some kind of indication that her spirit is okay first and foremost, and that maybe we can connect. And she said, I was so so moved by your talk, but what changed everything is the woman who came up on stage in the yellow sweater singing, You Are My Sunshine. That is the song my daughter and I sang all the time. And that was her singing to me. I mean, honestly, I just wanted to cry because it was so moving. And she said, thank you. That was, that was all that, that was guidance for me. So I'm sharing with you this range of, of stories, but especially the, for the person who wrote to say, wait a minute, I have to be in a good state. Not at all, just a guidable state. I remember years ago, it's 10 years ago now, maybe just a little over, I got a divorce, but it was after first my brother died out in his sleep. Six weeks later, my dad died, and then my husband left and decided he didn't want to be married to me anymore, which was a divorce I didn't want. And it, those three things, it was like a bowling ball. Father, brother, husband, crash and burn. It just destroyed me. And I was about to have a nervous breakdown and my daughter prayed for me. I have two beautiful daughters and one called me and said, I just prayed for guidance. This is bad. We're losing everything. She said, and my guides, I prayed to Mother Mary, which is a very dear guide in our family and to her especially. And she said, I got the guidance. We should move to Paris. Now, talk about wild guidance coming from, but I'm just giving an example of how guidance can show up sometimes. Now, I had a choice, check myself into a, a psychiatric hospital and go through a mental breakdown, which is exactly what was happening, or change the channel and move to Paris. So I thought about it for maybe 30 seconds, and I said, let's move to Paris. Now, I said yes to that guidance. Yes, dramatic. Yes, crazy. Yes, made no logical sense. In fact, Paris had just suffered a tremendous terrorist attack. So everybody said I was triply out of my mind, but we were out the door and moved to Paris. I haven't looked back. So that was a leap of faith kind of guidance, but it felt so right that it left my tortured mind quiet and, and supported. This will be, I didn't, couldn't explain it. I had no way out, but my guidance told me. So when you get guidance, you don't get the whole story. You just get the next step most of the time. And, and you always have a choice and we'll all, always still go through painful experiences because that's growth. But the guides show up. They might show up in little ways, big ways. They might just say, turn here and there's your parking space. But you know what? If you were looking for that parking space, and especially if you were in a hurry, that's as big as move to Paris in that moment. So how do we get to that place? Well, like I said, so many people I've worked with have already been there. And it's not that you're not getting guidance, because I know that we are. We're hardwired for it. It's what you're doing with it. Are you saying, I can't be sure? How can I explain? How do I know? I I need permission. When it's really the response. So if you're available, at least acknowledge the guidance. And remember, you have a choice. Just say it out loud. Put your hand on your heart. My guidance says, if you can't get that far because you're so troubled, go for a walk. Just walking, left brain, right brain, will open the gateway to guidance. Believe me, when my life started to blow apart, the first thing I did was take a long walk called the Camino de Santiago. 850 kilometers walk, a month walk, many kilometers a day walk. And in it, I didn't know. I was like, what do I do? What do I do? And I got guidance. I got such clear guidance. I wrote it in a book called Uplifting Prayers to Light Your Way. And it was written to myself, getting the guidance. But I wrote it and it's out there. And it was beautiful transmission that was guiding me day by day. I also wrote about that whole experience because my my mission in life is to share that 
It's not about people being up on mountaintops. It's about us being in the mix of things that we still can be fifth dimension souls and we can still get guidance, especially when we're in the pea soup of the, the dramas of life and the pain of life. That Camino book is called Walking Home. And then I wrote about coming to Paris because I share everything and that it's painful and it's awful, but it's also wonderful and you get guidance and pretty soon life starts making sense. You learn from the fifth dimension that everything is connected and makes sense. So if, you, if you're stuck and you can't get guidance, go for a walk. And when you're walking and you're angry and enraged, say so, let it all out. Now, of course, don't yell at any person, but you can start saying, I'm angry about this, I'm upset about that, I'm, 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 I'm hurt about this, I feel betrayed about that. Let it out because then it gets quiet and then you can say, help me, guide me. And you can even put your hand on your heart. And if you feel like, I don't know, I don't know, say, well, if I did know or if I were receiving guidance, it would be, and then say it out loud because whoop, it'll come right through. Another great way, which I've been sharing lately, is to use oracles. And you may have an oracle. Maybe you're that far already. I just created, let me show you. I just created this Ask Your Guides Oracle. Here it is. And the Ask Your Guides Oracle, oracles are a direct connection to guidance. So you can just shovel a card. And this is a way your guides make it super simple. Because a picture tells you a thousand words. And so you pull out the card. And you get, an, you get a message. And the guide, even in here, the message is bounty. Can you imagine? Bounty for all of us. And the runner guides, bounty. And the runner guides say, I'm going to go help you find bounty. So take that as a personal message. And the whole key is that you're wired to be a fifth dimension person. You are naturally designed to be a fifth dimension person. And you don't have to be in a happy state. You can be real and if you're suffering, but you have to be in an available state. So write down, where have I received guidance and did I listen? Where would I like guidance? Because even by writing it down, you make yourself available. You always have a choice. Even where did I get guidance and I didn't listen? Write it in the comments because when you start validating your experience, it gets stronger. When you start validating your your inner self, it does get stronger. So that's the message for today is let your spirit recognize that, that you're available, that you're letting the spirit of you come online. You're letting the spirit of you take over. You're letting the spirit of you guide you. And with that, you connect to the spirit realm, which will guide you beautifully. So that's my message for today. I hope this helps. We're simplifying this. It's not complicated. And if you're angry and you're hurt, that's just human. So love that part of you and, 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 and acknowledge that part of you, but then also acknowledge your spirit. That is the fifth dimension you. And know that that spirit will connect you to spirit guides, will connect you to guidance. And you won't get the end of the story. You'll get the next step. And then you'll get the next piece of guidance and the next step. And we take it a step at a time. And that's how we're going to rise to the fifth dimension, connect with our guides and find real, real peace, real peace in our day-to-day -day human lives. So that's my message for today. We're going to continue this journey and work together. My mission is to empower you to connect with your guides. And I'm thanking you with my whole heart for staying with me today and listening to this I send you all my love and I'll see you next week. Bye everyone.